I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, it's Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Happy New Year to everybody. Hope you had a great uh, holiday season and we're getting right to the video. Appreciate all the supporters, but uh, we're going to do a video about how to become a better destroyer player. Again, this is just tips and techniques that I've seen over the years and uh, something I can share and maybe hope, hopefully it adds value to you. If you do see value in this, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all those uh, supporters, subscribers, and you guys uh, really uh, built the community up and made it a great time for me and for everybody else in the community and just uh, appreciate everything you guys have done as well as the comments. Also, I'm learning a lot from you guys as well because again, I'm always learning to pretend like you know everything. It means you don't know anything. So um, you understand that you don't know everything and the more you know that you don't know, uh, is something that is called humility and it makes you open uh, an open book to keep on learning and learning So let's get right to it how to become a better destroyer player and again I'm always learning how to become better destroyer players uh, a destroyer player and techniques But this video is really just kind of a, a lot of uh, techniques uh, Tactics procedures things that I've noticed and again, um, I've been a tactician in the military still am uh, weapons and tactics also flying a lot of you know things uh, out there and uh, of course you know, it's really a good to be in the military to see a lot of experience learning from a lot of other units as well as seeing other uh, nations, how they operate. And then, uh, I mean, I work with a lot of people basically. And uh, from those years, I get to learn a lot. But I'm employing that into this simulation. And simulation is a great way to learn as a teaching tool as well because I've noticed even in the military, we use simulation a lot. Uh, especially to um, you know mimic battles, mimic tactics and uh, situations that require to allow you to go a little bit more in depth and get better. So well, how can we become a better destroyer player? Now destroyer players you guys notice is one of my favorite uh, roles in the world of warships because it gives you the ability to be a game changer and you are a leader and I like leading from the front and then I also like supporting and giving tech uh, techniques uh, I like to calling the plays and showing strategy and strategy is really fun uh, for me because you develop things you get to see it develop and before your eyes and see how it works so a uh, couple things we're going to talk about here, how to become a better destroyer player. So first things first, uh, I'm going to go through the uh, match and show you kind of the progression of a destroyer player and how um, I play, how I've seen other people play. And I think you can use some of these techniques to add value to those that want to become a DD main or become a better destroyer player that are just new to the game that want to see more and more of this kind of play style so that you can get better because I believe the destroyer player is one of the hardest uh, assets or roles out there. As opposed to the other ones where, the, you know, the carrier, like you fly planes around, what do you do? That's world, world airplanes. I'm not going to go into that. But battleships, very difficult nowadays because why? You're always getting spammed and shot at and burned down, torpedoed, everything. I mean, every single class attacks a battleship, right? The cruiser player is a little bit more variety of everything. You're, you're kind of larger than a destroyer, smaller than a battleship, a little bit more nimble, got guns, got firepower. You can deal with planes stuff somewhat and you can maybe help with submarines. The submarine class is probably the new destroyer nowadays, which, again, I've just sent a video out saying, you know, I want to... Uh, I'm not saying to, uh, that I hate it so bad that I don't want to stop playing the game, but I just want to show that Wargaming, hey, or those that are out there, hey, just stop playing it. Because if you don't, if you really don't like this class, don't play it or uh, play it or be in a game with it in it. And I'm, I'm seeing that Wargaming has started to creep into the ranked and competitive matches where in clan battles, think about it, if they don't have submarines and CVs in clan battles, that should tell you something, that they don't believe that it is... Uh, uh, good for the player base because people want to in a game that's specifically designed on surface warfare um, you don't introduce things that are tactical advantages that kill the game because it, it would be just like me taking an a10 tank buster into world of tanks uh, it's called world of tanks world of tanks for a reason not world of a10s and tank killers playing against all everybody else that has tanks it's it's not it's one-sided just like the submarine is a one-sided uh, kind of match where majority of them were sinking surface ships and they and then the surface ships really could do little or nothing to it and if they did they had the tools that are capable of allowing them to use tactics and techniques um, a great movie is a movie by Tom Hanks uh, or sorry with Tom Hanks in it called Greyhound where it shows how the destroyers back in the day had to struggle against taking on the the, uh, the submarine class and, and again that's how they combat it but in World of Warships it seems very difficult to do that because you're not given the tools necessary to actually combat them correctly. But again, I digress. What's the role we're talking about is the submarine role, right? So how does a submarine role player, um, and I'm going to go step by step, what can you do to improve your game and what techniques and procedures that I do to start the game off? So again, step one, 
when you first start a match, what do you do? Check the roster. You check the lineup. Now I'm using the, again, this can work for randoms and uh, maybe some ranked. Uh, actually, majority ranked and clan battles the same, but this can work for randoms as well. I just kind of just negate the carrier and the submarine. They're they're there. There's nothing you can do about it, other than you just gotta you know mitigate as much of the damage as you can and just get through the match. But the first things first, as a destroyer player in any kind of role or match, what's the first thing? I hit tab and I check the player lineup. Why is this important? Because you want to know what you're going up against and what to expect and how to mitigate and actually plan for the worst, right? Always play plan for the worst, hope for the best. The first thing is we're going to look for the radar cruisers because why? The number one, I think, biggest thing that is uh, besides carriers, obviously, but I'm not going to deal with them. There's nothing you can do about it. The biggest thing you can do is stay away from radar cruisers. I'm looking for the radar cruiser right off the bat. Notice I have to know this because I play the game so much. I, you just study the ships and you could, should know. But if you want to really learn about it, um, just go on to the World of Warships Wicca or Wikipedia. They're a kind of a database. Or go to World of Warships um, official website altogether. But the Wikipedia pages or even some of these other World of Warships stats tell you what every cruiser um, has on it. And just to be simple, it's the majority of the time, it's the American and the Soviet cruiser line, and maybe with regard to the British, uh, like the, the Minotaur and maybe a Brisbane or something, something along the, Min the Minotaur British style. With regards to those two, the majority of American cruisers and also the Soviet cruisers have radar. Now, the worst ones of all are the Soviet cruisers because their cruiser, now again, you have to know this just by learning the game, and I'll teach you right now just by watching videos. The Soviet cruiser, like the Moscow here, has 12 kilometer radar. 12 kilometers is a very large distance for a destroyer player because most of the time, destroyer player guns are usually around the 11 to 13 range, right? Which means they are, if you're within a gun range of something, you probably are in the, within range of a, a, a Soviet uh, cruiser which is radar lasts from 20 to 30 seconds, depending upon how they build it. It's bad. Why? Because you, as soon as they pop that radar, you're discovered, your concealment, which you have the best concealment in the game, uh, besides a submarine player, but some of the, the basically the destroyer player, his role is to stay hidden, go in and do wreck havoc, right? But it's mitigated by having radar cruisers. Like notice our team, Stalingrad, Stalingrad, and Brasco by Brisbane, which is, uh, I think it's a Commonwealth or a British, uh, kind of it's a Minotaur basically, that has radar in it. So you got to know those things. Hey, I need to stay away from these guys. Knowing the ranges, just know Soviet cruisers go out to 12, remember that. And of course, the Des Moines, Salem, and Salem are all uh, American destroyers, where the Des Moines, I'm always looking for, because Des Moines is the most plentiful cruiser in the game. You, you see it probably all the time in a match. The Des Moines is 10, just remember 10, that's 10 fingers, how do you have 10? So again, Soviet cruisers, 12, American cruisers, 10. With the exception of the Salem, which I believe is a lot shorter. I think it's seven and a half or eight. Correct me in the comments. I don't play the Salem. I don't have it. I just know it's a lot shorter than the Des Moines. It's probably around the seven and a half, eight range. Because I notice I've never been radared by Salem out at 10. Um, the Venezia is uh, that is an Italian. Just, just listen to the name. Venezia, that it does not have radar. So just look, keep on the lookout for American, Soviet, and of course, the British line, if you see a Minotaur or Brisbane, just know they have radar as well. So just keep on the lookout. That's the first step. Okay, so what's the next step? So let's see, let's go back to this match. So I'm in the daring. I'm getting. Uh, I'm just going to pick a couple random uh, destroyers that I like to play that are kind of very universal, very simple. Uh, they are very easy because you can go on the tech tree line and, and grind them up. I think Daring is probably the, your best starter destroyer because it does everything you ever wanted. It has guns, it has torpedoes, as you can see here. It's got concealment, which is great, 6.0 concealment, which means that is the range that if any nothing is there inside of 6, you can stay hidden until they either pop radar, fly an airplane over you, or something goes inside your range that can spot you, for example, in another destroyer or a submarine, uh, for that matter. So let's take a look at this map right here, just the very basic layout. So let's say I started up here. Um, I started somewhere usually in the north or south. I'll just say for this example, I'm here up in the north right here. So the first step is where do I go? Well, what is your role as a destroyer player? Let's talk about it. The first one is important is you're supposed to spot and cap. That means you got to move in a direction of a cap you notice the destroyers are the fastest in the game, um, besides submarines maybe. The fastest in the game, which means they can go and cap quickly. And also, since their concealment is lower, remember I told you that circle, that was six kilometers. And that means if nothing is inside of that six, that means it can't be seen, uh, besides airplanes and subs. 
since you're undetected and you have the best concealment, you can sneak up to areas without being detected um, besides the radar issue, which we'll talk about later. But that is allows you to go and spot and cap things much quickly. That's your role. So role number one is to go out and cap and spot for the rest of your team. What does spotting mean? Spotting means that you are able to sit near other enemy players and show line of sight with them because their spotting detection is so big. So, for example, this uh, this Stalingrad here, I'll show you a Soviet cruiser like I talked about, radar 12. Um, it's spotting distance out to 14 or 15, which means that they have a 15 circle or 14 or 15 kilometer circle, which means if I enter that circle, I can spot them. That means my other teammates can see that enemy player that therefore they can say a Vermont can shoot at an enemy or Vermont can shoot at another cruiser right here. And that is exactly what your role is designed to do. I've seen so many uh, destroyer players where they're out in la la land. They're like going out to here or they're going way out to here, not really doing anything. They're going behind islands right here, which means it blocks line of sight to the enemy, which means what? A lot of your players cannot get their guns to bear or shoot on anybody or get correct line of sight to employ their weapon systems so that they can start taking down hit points and winning the game, right? So that's the one downside is to avoid doing that, please. What your first role is, is to get near a cap and spot and try to cap if feasible. Now, the technique I've been noticing lately is I don't want to cap right off the bat. So let me zoom in here and give you an example of where the daring is right here. The, you notice the first issue I'm showing right here is like I'm the lately with radar cruisers, again, the Stalingrad, right? what? Soviet cruiser, 12 kilometer radar, which means it goes out the way out here, right? So that means I have to maintain a safe distance away from them because as soon as I pop that radar, I'm revealed. They're going to shoot at me right away. So the tactic I've been doing lately is not capping immediately because look, you have two options. You can either go outside the cap or you can go in the cap. Which one's the most dangerous? Obviously, the going in the cap is the most dangerous. Why? Because well, one, you have no exit. Because look, if I go in this way and go in the cap and I turn into the cap to cap, I have, where do I go? I have to take a slow 180 turn this way to run into an island, or if I turn around this way, look how much time it takes. It takes almost about a minute to two minutes to turn a full 180 to egress the area where the whole time the radar cruiser could have radared me, shoot at me all the whole time, and I'm losing a lot of HP damage. You don't want to do that as a short player. You have the lowest, some of the lowest HP in the game, right? Battleships have what, over 80 to 100,000 hit points, while you, uh, a destroyer player, typically have what, what, roughly around maybe the 20,000. Uh, roughly range. I mean, that's not much to play with, especially if you don't have heals. So I usually pick destroyers that do have heals and mitigate the, um, the mistakes I make because if I make a mistake and I lose health points, I want to have heals to come back. But most of the time, the destroyer players do not have heals, so I'm trying to help you to save that the HP as best you can. So that that this technique right here, I've noticed, does not work anymore with the day of you know CVs flying in, radar cruisers uh, attacking you right here. Um, and you have submarines that outspot you. There's a submarine right here. It can outspot you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And then, of course, you got the radar cruiser that can shoot at you, and, of course, you got CVs flying around. So what do I do normally nowadays? The tactic and technique I do really is to stay just right outside the cap range. Now, if I'll draw this a little bit more accurate here. You can see where I'm going right here. I'm kind of just zigzagging right outside of the cap range. Why, does, why do I do that? Well, one, it allows me a spot for my team and to see what's going on in alpha and if it's safe because what i can do is then slow down and then back up into the uh, cap and cap that way i never try to cap nose in because look what happens if you nose in if i, I just showed you earlier if i nose in where do i gotta go i can't reverse that takes too much time so either option is to drive this way or drive that way and notice i have to go forward no matter which distance then there's no egress there's no exit strategy always think about an exit strategy and a destroyer player so therefore i'm always going this or like turning away or to zigzagging out and then of course reversing back into the cap to cap it if it's safe so again i always give myself an out i can either egress behind an island or i can egress back away from the target and reassess and regroup right so that's the issue right there that's why i don't do that and i notice i'm also torping as well that's your next role as a destroyer player if you do have torpedoes you're going to launch a spread into the a cap and hopefully you can get a free hit on a uh, destroyer who's unsuspecting or you're starting to torpedo a another cruiser so that is your role right there. Your role is to go out, spot, cap, and also eliminate the other destroyer player. Now, the other thing, like I just talked about, was because I'm outside the cap, I can use this ring right here to identify another destroyer player. It gives me ability to spot without having to use any of my uh, assets or anything I have, like a radar or hydro or whatever. So my concealment, let's say, is six, right? Let's say it goes out to, and again, I, I'm sorry if this isn't accurate to scale, uh, let's show, let me show my circle here. Let's say that's my concealment. Let's say I'm right, 
Uh, let's see here. Let's say I'm at the center, uh, center or right there. That's where I'm at, right? And uh, forgive me if this is not the scale. I'm trying to figure out uh, what's the best way to do this. Let's say, let's say my concealment is just rough, I'm outside the cap. I'm roughly right there, right? Let's say that's that's my circle concealment. So if I'm like moving and that's my concealment, I can keep my concealment just right there at the edge of the ring. Now. I, you know, I can't spot anything because I'm not within range of another destroyer, but say they have a concealment of six as well. Let's say I'm six and they're six. Uh, and I'll, maybe I can show this to represent a little bit better. Let's say my destroyer is in this, uh, oops, sorry. Let's say my destroyer is at the center there and that's my concealment, six. Notice I'm I'm still outside of the cap, uh, or oh, sorry, I put the cap right there and we'll put it there. And maybe make this concealment a little bigger. And forgive me there. Let's see, erase this thing. Maybe I think the more realistic concealment is something. Most caps are that size. Yeah, that, that looks about right. Let's just let's go with that. The concealment roughly is like that. Let's say I'm right outside of it. And now again, I'm not spotting any destroyer. You see, I'm not. I'm I'm six kilometers. Let's say the other enemy destroyer is right here, and their concealment is uh, similar. Uh, it's going to be red, and then I'll fill it with blue. Let's say, let's say that's their concealment, okay? I mean, hopefully that matches, yeah, roughly around six kilometers. Okay, so we're not spotting each other because why? We're not inside any, any, anybody's circles. But this is what I've noticed. I can use the cap to allow myself to determine if there is a somebody capping or a destroyer player is there. So what will happen is as the, the, the destroyer player is moving in, let's see here, I'll put him like right, let's say, let's say he's moving right there just to cap, right? That means... They're inside of the, the, the zone and it's starting to tick down. I'll notice, I'll watch uh, at the top of the screen, it'll say alpha is starting to be taken. That means somebody entered the cap. and I, But he doesn't know I'm there because I didn't touch the cap. I'm still outside of it and assuming they're getting radar me. Now I know, I know where this guy roughly is. He's somewhere along this edge right here, most likely around the outer edge. And that means I know where that, my, my, that guy is. So I'm going to tell my Des Moines, hey, radar. Now that the guy's radar, I can immediately return fire and kill this guy right away. And that allows me to have the, the, the edge on, and the first shot, first look, first kill against a target. So that's that's exactly why I do that. I use the cap. Notice I'm using other um, mechanisms in the game to allow myself to spot other players and use that to my advantage to win the game that way. So that's that's the reason why I do this technique. Again, you can try other ways. This is the one I've seen works the most well today in today's meta. And uh, it's working out so far so well. All right, so what's the next role as you? So now that you spotted, maybe hopefully killed a destroyer player, remember your role is to kill other destroyers. That's one. It's to spot. It's to cap. It's to also then eliminate the other cruiser players. And because you want to eliminate the radar cruisers right off the bat, I've always said the most dangerous thing to a destroyer is the radar cruiser. So what do you want to do? We're going to have to eliminate them. So let's take a look at uh, what I'm doing here. Um, you notice I'm, I'm I'll, like I said, I launched torpedoes and right off the bat, boom, there's the Napoli. That's a cruiser. Very bad. I mean, luckily it's not a radar cruiser because why? It's not Soviet, it's not American, and it's not British. So most likely there are no other radar cruisers outside of that and that I've seen so far in the game. So notice all we're doing is right here is we're torping. Um, the, the, the torps help the damage. And we're also, I mean, AP is cool for if the ship is broadside. Notice I'm not getting as much damage. I'm getting some pins, non-penetration. Ooh, look, got a torpedo hit right there there and that's exactly what you want to do you stop the advance of a cruiser player that's pushing that's really important look at what a destroyer can do to a push a destroyer player is so critical that it can actually cause fear in a lot of cruiser players and bigger ships that they just halt the advance right there alone just by one destroyer player being there and kind of showing a threat now look we're in the smoke right now we're still outside the cap notice my concealment is down to um you know, it was down to a low two or threes inside of smoke, which is fire range. I see another destroyer player. That's my job. My job is to kill the other destroyer. He's heading to the west here, which means I know if I turn left right now, I can go in and eliminate him. But also, I'm trying to help my team remove the Napoli and the Stalingrad to help my Des Moines and Hindenburg here, who are also stopped by their advance. So guess what? The only player who's in a position to help advance is me. So I'm going to try to get in a better position. Notice I'm not firing. Again, you can fire out of smoke. I like firing out of smoke a lot of times. But you do realize if you do that, you are going to be spotted visually and that means we're going to accept returning fire so i like to get shot at too sometimes but not too much i'm trying to mitigate damage notice my health pull point is only twenty four thousand three hundred. so right now again i'm trying to start a fire that's the name of the game right here i'm my role as a destroyer player is to start fires on everything i see uh known to man because why the cruiser the destroyer player sorry 
is one of the best at uh, DPM, rate of fire, whatever you want to call it. It shoot a lot of bullets downrange that cause a lot of fires downrange, and that's exactly what you want to do. Notice the Napoli's reversing. I'm just trying to start a fire on him and get him going. We'll speed it up there. Yep, we get a couple fires right there, as you see. And, of course, uh, the Stalingrad is also showing broadside. Now, you got to know some of the aspects of your destroyer ship. Most of the time... I would see the British line has one of the best AP in the game. Go look it up. Uh, the British line has the AP damage. I mean, uh, let's see if I can pull it up here. Uh, I'll pause it right here. I'll show you. I just look at this filter of the website here, and I'll go to Destroyer, European, Spain. Here it is. So AP shells, who's at the top here damage-wise? Uh, Druid, Ostergotland, or maybe it's the AP shell. Let's see here. Initial speed, flight time, impact angles. Here is. I'm always looking at impact angles. Uh, small on Holland. Maybe that's not it. Penetration ricochet. Oh yeah, ricochet angles. Here it is. Ricochet angles. If you don't know, the Druid, Daring Vampire, at the top. One of the best AP angles in the game. Uh, one of the best AP in the game. So that means that what, what I'm what it's getting at is you you don't have to be so angled to get these shells to work or effective. Or essentially, uh, a ship can be angled a little bit more harshly, and your shells will hit a lot better. And you notice the Druid, Daring Vampire are some of the best. The British line, basically, right? So um, I digress. Let's get back to it. Um, so look at this. And you have a full, almost full broadside. Uh, ship or cruiser and I'm going to switch to AP in a minute once I get a fire going and then you're going to see me start lobbing shells right into uh, maybe that's not it you know what, I'm starting a lot of fires. Ooh, look at that. Eliminate one cruiser player. Now that I've eliminated one, they've eliminated one. It gives our other Hindenburg some room to breathe. And again, we're shooting the uh, Stalingrad. And again, we're going to probably try to start at least one fire on him. And yeah, we'll speed it up. There, There's a fire right there. See, a lot of good fire. Now, how am I aiming here? So uh, I'll pause it right here just to show you guys how am I aiming. Look, I'm aiming to the rear. Why? Because I'm looking at his smokestacks, and you got to understand the mechanics of the game. If the smoke is going this way to the front of the ship, it means he's going in reverse. Duh, right? 101. But that means if he's going in reverse, I have to lead the shells. Notice that my aim point is to the rear and just above the water line so that I can hit the superstructure. I'm basically putting the horizon line right here on the superstructure to allow my shells to hit the superstructure because why? Everything else is armored. HE doesn't really do very well on armored areas other than 19 millimeters superstructure. This is just something you got to know about the mechanics of the game. And I see a lot of guys when they're shooting, they're missing all their shots because they just don't know how to aim. And I think that's very important and crucial because what, what's the point of shooting if you don't know how to hit it anything, right? So I'm teaching right now, use the horizon line on these markers right now to shoot and hit the shells. Now, I also use this particular, you're going to have to look it up. I don't know what it's called, but it's basically, it has these numbers on it. So that way I can use these numbers to help guide me, guide my shell or guide me to where to aim to know where the shells are landing. Rule of thumb for me is I look at this timer right here, 7.36 seconds. What that means is that at this distance, 9.57 kilometers right here, at, I'm shooting. It's going to take 7.3 seconds for the shells to get there, which means I just look on the tick mark and I look about roughly where it is, six eight so seven's right there so i just put the seven right on the center superstructure there i fire and that's usually see notice is very close where the shells are going to land and where am i trying to hit now i'm trying to hit the four positions of where fires are started so where are the four positions the tail superstructure number one in the rear superstructure number two in the front and su and of course the bow is where the four places to start a fire are i'm trying to get as many fires as i can because i call it like compound interest. Uh, even though I'm not shooting, these fires are taking hit points off and getting damage onto this thing without me having to do much other than shoot. If I didn't shoot, these fires still burn this thing down. And again, these cruisers burn down very, very easily and very well and for a long time. So that's my goal. I'm trying to get as many fires as I can on a cruiser player. So right there, see, I'm shooting the ship, uh, the ship with a HE right now. And then I'm going to switch to, I don't know, oh, I guess I don't switch to AP. But normally I would switch to AP on a broadside cruiser to get the maximum damage if the fire is going. Because why AP shells on the British line and maybe a certain other couple destroyer lines are very, very good. Mostly the British line. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, after this, once I destroy the Stalingrad, uh, you see now how I'm aiming here. You're trying to get another fire. He's about to die from fire. Look, I'm not shooting really, not hitting anything. And boom, he goes down by fire right there. As you can see, fire damage. Now. Here's your other role. Now that you've eliminated the two the cruisers that were taken on Alpha, you are now going to attack the other cru the destroyer player. Now, the Hindenburg by itself cannot, uh, I'm not saying impossible, but it's very difficult for them to go one-on-one -on -one with a uh, destroyer because they go undetected so easily. They can smoke up, and our Hindenburg doesn't have radar. So your role is hunt down DD. So look at how I'm going to do this. Now, as a destroyer player, when you're going on to a one-on-one -on -one engagement like something like this, now I normally... 
Uh, I love this image, by the way. Seeing a destroyer like this coming at you is just a sweet sight to see because you just got full broadside and you can just shoot right into them and using AP. I love AP with the uh, the British line again, but HE also solves, if you don't know how to use H H uh, AP, you can just switch to HE, which is high explosive right here, select number one, and you can fire and try to kill the destroyer just by shoot, but by brute force and just a ma more shells on target than anybody else. So what's the first thing I do? I'm angling into the target. Now you gotta keep in mind, most destroyers have torpedoes, so I always, always assume if I see a destroyer not shooting at me, boom, tor torpedoes are coming my way, which means you gotta either make a decision. You gotta either turn left into the torpedoes or turn away and run away. So don't go, don't go full, like kind of angled in to the destroyer because you're just asking to be um, broadsided by a bunch of torpedoes. So in this situation, we're going to just put the thing on the thing right here, put it on the horizon line, and just kind of gauge where the shells are be going. Now, in this time, they're so close, The uh, we're going to see how the shells are going to actually hit. So I'm switching to AP right here because AP shells on the British, like I said, do a lot of damage. Look at that, 1,400 damage right there. And just these small little hits, 900. I mean, I mean, look at his health point. It's only 13,000, 10,000. Every hit, I'm taking about 1,000 to 1,500 off. It's hurt him out. Now, look what he's doing. I want more destroyer players to do this for you guys. He's stop sailing in straight lines, and he's doing the little jiggle, shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake, right? He's going left. He's going right. He's going left. He's going right. Don't stay. Um, like I said, here, I'll, I'll give you a visual representation of it. Do, like He's going this direction, right? He's going south right here. He's not going in a straight line. Going in a straight line means it's so easy for you to walk the shells on. If you go in a straight line, you just go, oh, the shells are not hitting. The shells are hitting. Let me lead him a little bit better. No, this is what he was doing. He's going like a zig left. He's going right. He's going left. He's going right. He's going left. He's going right. Just small little, little, now it's not that exaggerated, but notice like, look, if I draw a straight line and then just go left one degree, go right one degree, it, it changes your position on the map ever so slightly that it throws off the shells. Now let's take a look at that video again and you're going to see his shakes. Watch this. Some of my shells are actually missing. There's a miss over there. Two of them missed there. And I'm just getting lucky shots by shooting below. He's doing the shimmy shake shake. And uh, a lot of these shells uh, will go just miss by a hair. And that's exactly what a lot of um, uh, destroyers need to be doing to mitigate that damage. And I think it's very, very important. I mean, you, and you can even th back off the throttle like three quarters speed. And that little speed reduction changes your position in the near future because someone's aiming like ahead of you right here just by slowing down, puts you maybe right here now, and the shell will come and hit right in front of you. So, again, as a destroyer player to mitigate damage, just like you just saw that Shima do, great job right there. Was left, turn left, turn right here and there. Every couple seconds, change your vector. Go left, go right. And also slow down maybe one quarter speed, like down to three quarters if you're full, and then, then stop, start, stop start doing that throws off players so much they usually kind of give up shooting and they're getting really frustrated right so let's see here and as a short player we're okay now here's the other role as a short player we're also capping right again we lost our hindenburg to torpedoes right there now we're the only guy left over here we're hunting the destroyer we're also pushing the rest of the fleet away from the cap and we go in and cap this cap right here very easy very self-explanatory our speed um our ability to stay hidden our uh our agility being able to move around the map very quickly especially if you're in french destroyers uh that really really run uh quickly uh are very very effective and i'll, I'll watch a couple other videos here uh what's another one the colbert you know like i said the colbert speed um i'm gonna show you a couple videos with this very very powerful and here's another engagement right here um you can see uh, an engagement with a colbert kind of one-sided against the summers you can see getting radar by my teammate again see as a destroyer player know that you gotta stay away from the radar okay right here here's the beautiful sight to see Here's a beautiful sight to see when you're doing a one-on-one -on -one engagement where you're basically fights on, heads on, and you're going to see, hey, how are we going to get first look, first kill, first shot? So since I spotted him with the help of my teammate first, his guns are not in a position to fire at me, and he's 6.4 away. Uh, my concealment is a 7.1. That means he out detects me very easily, right? He's inside of my 7.1. He'll see me first, but luckily I have a radar. So what am I doing right here? I'm going to aim HE right here uh, for because the Club Air has one of the some of the best hard hitting HE in the game. And I'm going to aim just right in front of the ship and see where he's going right here. So he's going to turn. His guns are out of position. Now he's firing and streaming. Like I get that first hit. First hit, I get 1320 off of him. Again, my HP is way better. I outmatch just knowing your player uh, or enemy is very good. I knew I can outgun a Summers, no big deal. That's why I get a little bit more aggressive to push like this. 17,300 HP he's got to work with. He's already lost a 1320, 860 right there. He's down to 15,000. So notice I'm firing. I'm going to hit my reload booster here again this is some ships don't have that but i need to get my reload rate high um i like high fast firing dd gunboats because more shells you put down range more damage you can deal 
uh, right there. I'm just see how I'm aiming right there. I'm just kind of walking the shells. Now notice he's starting to turn away. He knows he's lost his battle. At this point, he's down to half his health. So he's what he's what he's going to do is he has two options. He either can turn and run away, and or he can stop and smoke. Two problems with the stop and smoking these days. With too much radar, you can't stop and smoke because why? The radar will spot you through smoke anyways, which means you're a sitting duck, right? So the only other option he has is to basically out juke this maneuver and try to out um, maneuver my shells. So what he'll do is he'll basically turn right around and go slim profile to me, which good. He has a smaller profile, harder to hit, smaller target, harder to hit, right? So notice that he's he's already lost the battle. He's starting to turn away. It's not working out for him. Notice that's, that's by small little changes in speed and, um, and and turning, throw off a lot of my shells. Like they're overshooting. Sometimes they'll hit the water right there just by him juking a little bit. And now he goes in the smoke, which is a great smart tactic. Get inside that smoke as fast as you can and turn away slim profile right there. Perfect. Here's the problem. My buddy just radared right there. And now, um, I, but look, he's slim probably. Even though he's spotted by the radar, it's very hard to hit sometimes at long range, eight kilometers, something that's like just turning away small profile like this. And it's very, very good tactics. And that's what a lot of destroyer players need to start doing. Do not go head to head with somebody you know you can't win and just kind of just uh, shimmy out of there, uh, shake, shake out and uh, drive away, regroup, reassess and re uh, rethink the whole matter right there. Uh, a couple other good things about destroyer player. And this is long range gunboating right here from the club air. Notice I can shoot this far, and it's hard sometimes. Look at that. Look, just throwing off the shots right there. I just showed you a clear example of he fired, changed something. As soon as I see a ship fire, slow down, turn left, or do some, or turn away, and just see something. He fired again. You see I'm starting to play with the ship, turn into it. He probably was. He shot probably behind me, so I turned towards him a little bit better. And right there, I'm also trying to start a fire on him again. Look, I'll see if I can throw that. The This shell, I'm, saying I'm watching it come in. Where's it going to hit? Did it hit me? No, completely wafted. I slowed a little bit down, throw off his aiming. And notice I'm trying to d destroy or even start a fire in him right now. And let's see if I can start one fire. Give me a fire. I see I notice I'm aiming at the front there. I'm just leading a little bit better, a little bit more. And do we get a fire? At least one. Come on, give me another fire. I see I'm trying to put some kind of fire going on this cruiser. And hope there we go. There's one fire right there. So you want to get some kind of damage. And notice the clock is ticking up. He took something, and that little stop right there threw off a little majority of his shell. So that's one thing I want guys want to focus on is hey, you're a destroyer player. You're supposed to mitigate, try to get them to draw fire onto you, so that they're wasting their shots on you. You're a biggest distraction on the team to allow your your teammates over here to push in the cap and take on. All while the Venezia is out of the fight. Notice the Venezia is not shooting at any of my, my buddies, which are perfect targets for a Venezia right here, right? You know, cruisers and uh, Venezia sap, you know, Venezia has got a great shot on these guys and the Summers as well. But because I came out and flanked the, the, the enemy right here, the enemy is now worried about me more than they are than my teammates. And now my teammates are being ganging up on, you're giving your teammates an tactical advantage by being a distraction, right? You're a decoy and you're allowing your teammates to shoot this enemy Des Moines right here. And there you can push in. And then once they kill him, they can then help me with the Venezia all while I'm still pushing and pushing their destroyer out of the cap as well. You're deterring a destroyer. You're deterring other cruisers. You're deterring a radar cruiser. You're deterring cap management. You're also allowing your teammates to maintain less damage. Look, somebody, and I just noticed this, this right here, you look, this fire coming in, is coming from another enemy player, which is not shooting at your teammate. By doing that, I'm giving my team the ability to look. The Summers is out here. The Venezia is running away. I'm giving my team a tactical advantage that they can play with so that they don't die. And you're helping them out a great deal. So, yeah, notice he's uh, driving. Oh, here, here's a pretty cool shot right here. Um, again, you're also great at torpedoes. So you got to look, let's see, I'll show you a better shot right there. Here's my torpedoes. I'm looking at where he at. He's probably not paying attention to me shooting torpedoes this long range out. I go slim profile and just use my front two guns to see what happens. And if I see a broadside cruiser here, I'm going to want to slap some AP into him right there because a broadside cruiser is delicious. And let's see where it goes. Am I going to get a shot? Look at that. Ooh, nice. A little bit of damage. Let's see, can I get an AP or Citadel? Ooh, torpedo hits. Nice Citadel right there. And I he he saw the torpedoes. And if I can get one more shot on him, boom, right there. I get a nice Citadel shot of an Anetzia. And that is exactly what you're supposed to be doing as a destroyer player. Mitigating damage, trying to save your buddy's cap as well. So you're killing cruisers. You're pushing destroyers out of the cap. And at the same time, you're capping. A lot of roles that can really change the nature of the game right there. And allows you to use um, your versatility and agility and basically the 
be situation awareness on the battlefield to allow your team to win. So I hope that video is a little inf um, uh, informational or uh, educational. If you see any value in it, like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support again. But let me know your thoughts below if this can uh, help you out to be a better destroyer player. And uh, as always, I uh, hope you guys have a great new year. We'll have a couple more videos coming out of uh, clan battles this season. Make sure you say hi if you see me out there. And as always, you guys stay safe and uh, you guys have been great. Take care. Cheers.